6,000 subscribers on YouTube, and to celebrate, we are making me a party dress. This dress has been living rent-free in my mind for so long, and I'm so excited to finally make it. I'm totally going against my better judgment and making myself a dress when I'm in the thick of sewing Christmas gifts right now, but it's totally okay because we are celebrating. A thousand subscribers might not seem like a lot, but I've been working super hard to get here, and I'm so thankful for all of you. So let's get into making the dress. Okay, so I have this really lovely lightweight twill that I'm going to be using. I'm not really sure how much I have of it, but it should definitely be enough for the project that I have in my mind. So what I want to make is a mashup between the Rose Cafe bustier and the Matilda dress. I want to use the top portion of the bustier and the skirt portion of the Matilda dress. I personally love how flowy the Matilda dress is, and the pockets have a really great shape. If you're interested in making the Matilda dress, I'll go ahead and link the tutorial for you. I've also never made the Rose Cafe bustier before, but I do have the pattern, so we're going to try it out today. I've never made a proper bustier, and I have a pretty small chest, but I'm wide around this way, so I'm really interested to see if we can get the fit right. Now before we start this project, I'm going to make a matcha. to get stuck into this project. Also, this isn't sponsored by any means, but I absolutely love my Ember mug. It's like the perfect addition to any workspace, especially if you work from home and you're a super slow drinker like me. It just has this little base that it goes onto, and the base keeps the mug warm at all times. I prefer this mug over something insulated like a Yeti or a Hydro Flask. While those are great for going out and about and running errands, this mug is perfect for at home because it actually keeps the mug warm, which means that you get to hold a warm mug, which is the thing that I don't like about insulated cups. But anyways, this one's great for my sewing space because I get really deep into projects and I totally forget about my drink and then two hours later I can come back to it and it's still warm. I'll have the one I own linked down below if you're interested in it. Now let's finally get into our patterns. Okay, here are the patterns that I have. I personally like to keep them in these manila folders because it's really nice and easy to store. I'm gonna start by making the bustier first and then once I have it all fitted and feeling right, then we'll go ahead and cut out the skirt portion. So for now, we'll put aside the Matilda dress and we'll work on the bustier. So since I haven't used this pattern before, I haven't actually traced out any of the sizes yet. So I'm going to go ahead and take some measurements, figure out what size I need, and then we'll trace off the pattern. I personally prefer tracing the pattern and keeping the original pattern intact. That way, if I didn't get my size right or my size fluctuates in the future, I can use this pattern again without having to reprint anything. Okay, let's go ahead and find the directions, and then we're going to scroll down to the sizing instructions. So it says to take your underbust, waist, and hip measurement, and then to measure the cup width, place the end of the measuring tape on the side of the breast, go over the nipple, and end at the center side of the breast. Also, you can use your favorite bra to take this measurement. <laughs> your girl does not own bras because bras do not fit me. Okay, we're going to go ahead and take these measurements, and then we can cut out the pattern. Okay, we're gonna try to get an accurate measurement without flashing you. Okay, so my underbust is 32 inches. And then we've got 30 at the waist. Okay, that's good. Also puts me at an 8 for the waist. Now we're gonna find the cup size. So, side of the breast over the nipple. Place the end of the measuring tape on the side of the breast, go over the nipple, and end at the center side of the breast. Center side, what does that mean? Center side is either like six and a half or seven inches. So where does that put me? Oh, okay. Perfect. Six and a half to seven inches is a cup size A. So we're going to go with an eight around this way with a cup size A. Ooh. 
Okay, so I'm in the process of cutting this out and realizing that it's kind of hard to tell which line I'm supposed to be tracing out. And also in the pattern, it's layered. So in theory, I should be able to go pick the size that I need like on my computer and then print out the single size. Normally I wouldn't prefer to go this route because like I said earlier, I like to keep my pattern pieces intact, but the pattern for the bust is only like five pages. So I think we can get away with going this route and not feeling too bad about the paper. So I'm gonna take a look at my computer and see if I can figure out how to get a single size on the pattern and then just print it out that way. Now let's try it out. Okay, so it says all pattern files are designed with layers. You have the option to print only your cup size or a few cup sizes as necessary. Open the pattern PDF in Adobe Acrobat Reader. Okay, well let's see if I've got Adobe Acrobat Reader in here. Mm, how do I get it if I don't have it? Okay, so I got it downloaded. Literally all you have to do is Google search the name and then press download. And now I have this Adobe Acrobat Reader thing that I need. Now we're gonna open up the file on the platform. I don't know if platform's the right word. Now we're gonna open up the file in that program and we're gonna try to figure out how to get the size that we need. Okay, I'm gonna figure this out real quick and I will be right back. Okay, I figured it out and I printed the first page which has a test square on it to make sure that everything's the right size and it is. So now I'm gonna go ahead and print out the rest and get it all cut out. Okay, we don't need this tracing paper anymore so we are going to put it away. Okay, super easy. All we have to do is tape two pieces together and then cut everything out. Okay, so I've got my pattern pieces cut out and can I just recommend to you guys if you're making this pattern that you do what I did and you print out the single size. It was so easy. There were only five pages that I needed to print out and this way I should get a super accurate fit when I make the bustier, which is going to be really important because if it doesn't fit properly, it's not going to look good. With looser, flowier garments, it's easier to get away with not being so precise, but with something like a bustier, it has to be super, super precise. So I'm really glad that I chose to print out a single size and then cut it. Now we're going to get into cutting our fabric, but first I'm going to iron everything out so that there's absolutely no creases in the fabric. of our interfacing pieces. I personally really like this midway interfacing from Pilon and I'll have it linked down below for your reference. Okay, all of my pieces are cut out and now it's time to interface all of the front bodice pieces. To make sure that my interfacing is gonna stick, I'm pressing and holding on each section of the interfacing for 10 to 15 seconds. This is super important because if I don't hold it for long enough, it's not going to glue down. All of our pieces are prepped now and we're finally ready to start sewing. Also, still super glad that my mug is warm because I have not touched it since I started this. And as you know, cutting always takes longer than you expect it to. So yeah, let's go ahead and start sewing.
Okay, the bodice is coming along and now I'm gonna iron all of the seam allowances towards the inside and I'm gonna top stitch them so that I can start assembling the cups to the bustier. decided I needed a quick pickle break. Curious if you guys like pickles and if you snack on them the same way that I do. And if you do, I would love to know your favorite brand of pickles because your girl likes pickles. And let's get back into sewing. I'm working on the bust cups now and I'm gonna attach the upper cut piece to the top of the cup. To make sure that I'm doing it properly, I have all of my pieces laid out here along with the pattern pieces so that I don't accidentally match like the top of the bust cup to the bottom of the cup. The triangles all look really similar so it would be really, really easy to do it upside down. are coming along and they actually fit. Ah! <laughs> I had my doubts because like I said before, I have itty bitty titties and nothing ever fits. There's no gaping and I'm so excited. It'll be really interesting to see how it actually fits once it's all attached to the bodice and everything, but I'm so excited. And now that those are all done, it's time to attach them to the bodice. So I actually got a bit ahead of myself because I didn't read the directions, but now that I've read the directions, I'm gonna attach the bust cup and the bust cup lining to each other, and then I'm gonna attach the bodice and the bodice lining to each other. Then I can attach those two pieces together and I should be at a good try on point. So let's go ahead and work on that. You guys, I must be hungry or something because I don't know how, but I totally forgot about the straps. So I'm gonna go ahead and make some adjustable straps and then do some unpicking and we will get back into it. Okay, so I'm gonna use the strap from the Matilda dress pattern because I really like that it's adjustable and I wanna make sure that this fits properly without having to twirl. So let's go ahead and cut that out and sew it up. Okay, ready for my least favorite part of all time? Turning the straps. This part is always more difficult than I expect it to be. Sometimes I use a loop turner and other times I use a pin, but this fabric is pretty slinky, so I'm thinking that the loop turner is gonna be the best bet, but we will see. You know, I really wish the instructions had had you prepare the straps earlier on because I feel like that's the reason that I missed this step, but that's just my personal preference and I could have also just read the directions. <laughs> okay, let's see about this. Some people really swear by these loop turners, but I think they're such a big pain in the butt because they don't always want to like hold on to the fabric and sometimes they let go of the fabric like halfway through turning the loop. So that's not useful. But oh my gosh, it's working really well right now. I'm so excited. Ah! Okay, yeah, so I think that loop turners generally work really well when you're using slinky fabric. But if your fabric isn't particularly slinky, then they kind of suck. But I am very pleased with how easy that one was. Hey. Tip, a lighter is your best friend in the sewing room. I use it literally every single sewing project. They're so cute.
You guys, are you kidding me? Look at how cute this is. Okay, she's just basted it together with pins, but I wanted to get a fit check, make sure that things were going well, and they are. I think this is where I'm gonna pause for tonight so that I can rest and recover and then finish it all tomorrow. There is some unpicking that I have to do to attach the straps to the bust cups. So we're gonna leave that for tomorrow after I've been fed and slept and all the good stuff. Okay, that's it for tonight. I will see you in the morning. Okay, it's the next day and I'm ready to get back into sewing. Admittedly, it's a little bit later in the day than I wanted to start, but it's fine. It's like two o'clock. I also did do a little bit more work last night that I didn't film and oh my gosh, look at how cute it is. So the bustier is pretty much all put together. This bust cup is sewn on and this one is just basted on at the moment. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew that one down and then I'm gonna get started on the skirt. Guys, look at it. <laughs> okay, it's just enough right now, but it is so cute and it fits so nicely. Like, look at this. Look at it. Oh my God. <laughs> it's so cute. Okay, so in order for it to fit like this, I pinned it up, but there's quite a bit of overlap. So the normal seam allowance just is gonna be too big for me. It wasn't very easy to pin up on myself, but I got it done. And I think this is how I want it to be. So I'm gonna take this off and I'm gonna cut off the extra seam allowance that I don't need. And then I'm feeling really conflicted because this is so cute, just the way that it is. And I definitely still wanna make a dress, but I like that this looks so good with jeans. So I'm thinking, what if I made this a top and then I made a matching skirt so that it looks like a one piece set, but it's actually two pieces? I feel like that might be more versatile. I don't know. I'm really conflicted. Oh. I'm not sure that I have two zippers to make this happen though. So I'm gonna think about it for a second while I cut out those skirt panels. All right, so my skirt panels and my pockets are all cut out and now it's time to assemble it all. Unfortunately, I only have one invisible zipper so I'm not gonna be making this into a skirt and top set. We're just gonna go back to the original idea and make a full dress. So let's go ahead and start assembling it. Okay, so the skirt panels are all put together. It is much longer than it needs to be, but that's okay, I can always just hem it later. So what I'm thinking is I wanna add a high slit at the front right side of the skirt, but I also wanna make sure that I place it correctly. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna gather the skirt with basting stitches, then I'll attach it to the bodice so that I can try it on and figure out where I want that slit to be. Then I'll cut open the slit, sew it up, and attach the skirt to the bodice. So yeah, let's get into it.
Okay, so the skirt is fully gathered and pinned, and what I think I'm gonna do is attach the pieces together, but leave a gap for where I think I want the slit to go. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so here's what it's looking like. I'm just holding it together and I put a pin right here and that's where I want my slit to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the slit now. to close this up with a zipper. I'm gonna be using an invisible zipper and if you're interested in learning how to do that, I'll link my tutorial on the screen for you. Now let's get to finishing this dress. We are almost done. The zipper is in and looking beautiful and now it's time to attach the rest of the bodice to the lining on the inside. I'm going to hand baste it down and then I'm going to sew it from the right side. Okay you guys, the bodice is all attached and now all I have to do is hem it and then we are ready for the big reveal. 